Hello, magnificent beings of love and light. Today we're going to do lesson 195, and this is one of my all-time favorites. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. Is that delicious or what? Gratitude is a lesson hard to learn for those who look upon the world amiss. The most that they can do is see themselves as better off than others. And they try to be content because another seems to suffer more than they. How pitiful and deprecating are such thoughts that we feel like, oh my God, I'm so lucky I'm better off than that one. How pitiful and deprecating are such thoughts. For who has cause for thanks while others have less cause. How can you be grateful that you got more than somebody else when somebody doesn't have as much as you? Crazy. And who could suffer less because he sees another suffer more? It, it, isn't that mind boggling? I feel better because I'm suffering a little less than you? Crazy. Your gratitude is due to him alone who made all cause of sorrow disappear throughout the world. Your gratitude is due to him. When we are grateful to God that there is no reason for sorrow, when we can be grateful to God that there is no lack, that there is nothing that is missing, when we can be grateful to God for the abundance that is, we really truly begin to know what God is because we have been conditioned to be content with so little. And then we compare ourselves, who's got, who's got more, who's got less? And then and we get satisfied thinking I'm better off than this one. I'm not quite as better off as that one You know that one's way ahead of me. This one's way below me. We have settled for so little that gratitude From the Eagles perspective is a form of settling form of settling Paragraph two it is insane to offer thanks because of suffering. I'm better off than that one What, what kind of gratitude is that? that, that you're, you're better off than the suffering of that one. But it is equally insane to fail in gratitude to one who offers you the certain means whereby all pain is healed and suffering replaced with laughter and with happiness. When I began to realize, oh my gosh, I am so grateful to God for having created the abundance that this universe is about that I get to take and, and leave whatever it is that I wanna take and leave, that I am creating my experience, that there is no person with more or less than I have. There is simply those who have allowed themselves to receive more or less than what God has given us. When my gratitude was shifted towards the fact that God gave it to us equally, equally to take or leave as we choose, that's when I began to really understand what gratitude was really about. Nor could the, the even partly sane refuse to take the steps which he directs and follow in the way he sets before them to escape a prison that they thought contained no door to the deliverance they now perceive. Yes, gratitude that God has given us another way, that there is a way out of the nightmare that there is a way into the space of abundance, that there is a way into the space of knowingness, that there is a way into the space of happiness, that that is what is abundant. What is abundant is everything that God has created. And my willingness to open that door is what has made me so grateful, grateful for the awareness that I'm creating my own reality. And there's nobody who's better or lesser than me in this world. We're all equal, choosing to take or not take as much of what God has created. So my gratitude is to God, not that I'm better off or lesser off than somebody else, period. Paragraph three, your brother is your enemy because you see in him the rival for your peace a plunderer who takes his joy from you and leaves you nothing but a, but a black despair so bitter and relentless that there is no hope remaining. Oh yes, when I saw my dad as, as that horrible person 
who took my peace when he left my family when I was 10 or my mother this the the idea that death could take my mother from me that I could lo I could experience loss that I that my mother left this idea that when my husband uh, then husband Ken wanted a divorce that he could take anything from me, he could take money and safety from me. Holy cow, I, I was so grateful when I realized that I didn't have to hold anybody in this world accountable for giving me anything that God already gave me. Now my work was to receive it directly from God, not to make other people in this world responsible for it. Absolutely amazing. Now is vengeance all there is to wish for? Because when people hurt us, we take vengeance on them. I was so angry at my dad. I didn't speak to him for years. So for the 41 years of my life that I lived, uh, when my dad finally passed away, I spent 30 of those years in vengeance. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be close to you because you abandoned me when I was 10 years old. Well, how crazy is that? I was abandoning my ability to have received that relationship with my dad, however it looked. When I was angry at Ken for the fact that he wanted to get divorced, I was not accepting the abundance that was coming my way because what was coming my way? Freedom from that insanity and that partnership with somebody who could not see the, the truth of the abundance of the love that was there. And when he closed himself up, off to that abundance I was trying to take vengeance on him by saying fine then I won't give you my love if you're not gonna receive it I'm not gonna give it to you which only caused my suffering so to let all of that go and accept that God is the source of the abundance and my gratitude is to God and only to God and then to me for being willing to go directly to God oh what a game changer now, now can you but try to bring him down, to lie in death with you, as useless as yourself, as little, as little left within his grasping fingers as in yours. So when we take vengeance on others, this is at the end of paragraph three, when we take vengeance on, on others and try to punish them for what they did to us by our, our thinking that we can withhold from them any, <laughs> my printer is making some funny noises, but when we believe that we can punish somebody else for what they did to us, there are two of us that are now insane. Two of us pretending to play in a world of lack of limitation of not enough this, so I'm gonna withhold from you what you withheld from me. Pure, pure insanity. Then we try to kill each other off um, by withholding life from them. Our, our joy is life. So we are trying to hurt the other one, but we are cutting ourselves off from, from our joy. We're dying inside thinking we're killing them. We're killing their joy because we're withholding it, but we're dying inside. It's like that old saying that we're drinking poison hoping somebody else will die. Paragraph four, you do not offer God your gratitude because your brother is more slave than you, nor could you sanely be enraged if he seems freer. It's mind-boggling how we have been believing that punishing each other, holding each other accountable, enslaving one another, somehow made us better, made us feel like we were more important. But all it does is it has enslaved us. Sentence number two in paragraph four, love makes no comparison. True love makes no comparison. Conditional legal love does, but true love, the love of God, the love of unconditional Love, because it is so abundant, it has to place no conditions because there's never not plenty of it to go around. Makes no comparisons. It's not that you have more or that I have, I have less or you have less and I have more. P sentence number three says, and gratitude can only be sincere if it be joined to love. And God is the source of love. It is the source of the energy of love. That's why when I had an encounter with God, it told me that it preferred for me to call it GESEL. It's an acronym, G-S-E-L. God is the source of the energy of love. When I began to see God as energy and as love, as what sources it, 
my gratitude was that that source never ends. That source is infinite. It is always there. I can always count on it. So when I see that gratitude can only be sincere if it be joined with love, I have to join with God for my gratitude to be sincere. So my gratitude is for God, with God, in alignment with the truth of what we are. We offer thanks to God our Father that in us all things will find their freedom. In us, we release the world from having to give us anything. I don't need to be grateful that I've got more than you. I don't need to be grateful that, that um, I'm catching up to you who has more than me. I don't need to feel bad that you've got more than me. I just need to acknowledge that there is one source and it is the supplier of everything. So I offer my thanks to God, my Father, that in me all things will find their freedom because God is what is in me. God is the energy that it, of love that is in me. It will never be that some are loosed are loosed while others are still found. Nobody is lost. Nobody is found. That That's not happening. In, in the mind of God, we're all equal. We're all there. We all have equal access to abundance. For who can bargain in the name of love? Only insane egos do. Paragraph five. Therefore give thanks, but in sincerity. We have to come in humbleness here. And let your gratitude make room for all who will escape with you, the sick, the weak, the needy and afraid, and those who mourn a seeming loss or feel apparent pain, who suffer cold or hunger, or who walk the way of hatred in the path of death. All these go with you. Let us not compare ourselves with them, for thus we split them off from our awareness of the unity we share with them, as they must share with us. So when I was married to Ken, and he was a millionaire, he had a lot of money, and thing we bought a lake house, which I know he bought because I really wanted that. So it was a beautiful gift that he was giving me by sharing his abundance in the purchasing of this lake house. But soon this lake house, which was older, 30 some odd years old, the signs of wearing, you know, wear and tear were apparent and things needed to be replaced that he had not really bargained on when we bought the house and did the inspection. Things appeared to be in good order. So we thought we were gonna decorate and clean up a few things, but nothing major. But the AC went out the day after we closed on it. The roof needed to be replaced. The carpets um, needed to be done. The, the whole house needed to be painted inside and out. The deck on the dock needed to be redone. So many things needed to, to be taken care of. The, the well pump needed to be replaced. <clears throat> it was one thing after the other. And I was so judgmental of how angry he was, how painful it felt to him to spend money on this house. Instead of seeing it as an investment with gratitude that he had the money, instead of relishing that he had the means, in, in, like I said, in gratitude that he had the means, he was so angry that every check he was writing to him was a loss. And as I was observing this, I jumped in the bandwagon of judging him and accusing him of not being grateful that he had the money. And the times that I was expressing gratitude that he had the money, he would get upset with me. Oh, you think you're so spiritual. Um, and it was a fascinating time where these lessons, I, I, I'm seeing that he was going with me on his path. I didn't need to make him feel bad that he wasn't being grateful. I just needed to be the presence of love that wasn't comparing, that was there, it not in I'm more spiritual than you are, um, I'm so grateful I'm more spiritual because I can maintain my peace while you're suffering over there. Instead of just being present to that, God was walking with him. Whether he knew it or not, it didn't, it's none of my business. I wasn't present for my brother at that time, even though he was my husband. He's my brother in Christ. I wasn't present to that his journey is his journey and however he's experiencing is none of my business. And then I could have been present instead of comparing. I could have been in gratitude to God for being with both of us. I could have been grateful to God that we all can create whatever we want to create with the experiences that we're having. I could have been grateful to God that we all have free will. And he was, he was free to use his will to suffer as I was free to use my will to be an enjoyment of it. And then I shifted to use my will to be angry at him and judge him. When my gratitude shifted to God for giving me this kind of freedom, oh my goodness, amazing. Paragraph six, 
We thank our Father for one thing alone, that we are separate from no living thing and therefore one with him. When I recognize I'm not separate from Ken, he's going through what he's going through, but we both are inside the mind of God, let God be in charge. Let my gratitude be that it's none of my business, it's not my responsibility to be my, my brother's keeper. My responsibility is to be the presence of love that does not compare so that that light could shine for him to see what, whatever it is that he needed to see directed by God, not by me. And we rejoice that no exceptions ever can be made, which, which would reduce our wholeness, nor impair our cha our, or change our function to complete the one who is himself completion. <coughs> My work in that relationship during that process of buying a lake house and having the means to fix it and not enjoy that process my work was to recognize that there was nothing that ken and i needed to do to complete ourselves we were already whole perfect and complete my work to trust was to simply trust that god had everything everything held within its embrace and my work was to allow myself to be the presence of love period because then I could trust that love itself was embracing both of us, both of us equally. Not Ken needs it, but both of us equally were being embraced by God. When my gratitude was for that our safety lies because we, every one of us is in the mind of God, I began to let go of my comparison about what, what was spiritual and not spiritual about Ken and I, what was right and not right about Ken and I. Absolutely amazing. Sentence number three in paragraph six, we give thanks for every living thing, for otherwise we offer thanks for nothing. And we fail to recognize the gifts of God to us. <laughs> Boy, was I grateful for every living thing, especially for Ken, showing me where I was comparing and not being the presence of unconditional love. Paragraph seven, then let our brothers lean their tired head against our shoulders as they rest a while. When I stopped trying to get Ken to experience gratitude for what he had and not, not be angry for what he lost, I couldn't offer him a shoulder to rest on. I, I wasn't leaving him alone to, to feel safe to rest on my shoulder. I wasn't being the light. I wasn't being the lighthouse who stood firmly grounded in truth. We offer thanks to them for if we can direct them to the peace that we would find, the way is opening at last to us. An ancient door is swinging free again. A long forgotten word re-echoes in our memory and gathers clarity as we are willing once again to hear. Well, I'm trying to tell Ken what he needs to be doing to be grateful. I couldn't hear God telling me, girl, I got him. Girl, I got you. Don't worry. If he's having a hissy fit, you don't have to be concerned with that. Don't compare his lack of peace to your peace. Because if you're comparing, guess what? You're not really at peace. And oh my gosh, was that a, a wake-up call to me. My ego had become so spiritualized that I was not listening to God because I was listening to my know-it-all spiritual ego. And when I began to shift, when I began to read these lessons, love is the way I walk in gratitude. I realized, oh my gosh, I'm trying to tell Ken to be grateful for what he has, but I'm not walking in love, so I'm not expressing gratitude. I'm expressing judgment, which was conditional love. Instead, instead of allowing him to see me as the presence of peace that, that would then reflect back to him what was possible, I was the presence of the police, you know, the, the peace police, letting him know you just gave up your peace by being judgmental. Holy cow. Paragraph eight, walk then in gratitude, the way of love. For hatred is forgotten when we lay comparisons aside. What more remains as obstacles to peace? It's impossible for there to be obstacles to peace when we stop comparing, thinking we are better off or lesser than anybody else. Especially, we're more enlightened or less enlightened. We're more connected to God or less connected to God. We're being more loving or more peaceful, that, that form of comparison is dangerous. The fear of God is now undone at last and we forgive without comparing. Thus, we cannot choose to overlook some things and yet retain some other things 
still locked away as sins. The fear of God, I began to feel when I began to love unconditionally. Because when I began to love Ken unconditionally, exactly how he was showing up, I was feeling God in me. I, you can't fear God when you feel God as love. And as I, I was grateful that God is love and I expressed God's love through me, things began to shift between Ken and I. I could tell that he was shifting, and it, but it, it wasn't my issue. It was, he's not, I'm not in charge of him. I cannot compare my journey with him. I began to really rest inside of the arms of God, and then God was speaking to me, telling me what my next move was. And my next moves came as, as we approached the place where I had to say, let's do a post nap. As I approached the place where I said, take my name off of the accounts. As he then needed to get divorced, and I said, okay. As we little by little began to untangle the, the relationship our ego was in charge of, it's because I was listening to God. Yes, I blocked God many times with my ego, but my commitment was to always come back to listen to God because what I was most grateful is that what I could count on for sure was God being with me always and that being love. And as I felt the love of God, I knew God as only love. Fear of God disappeared. All that I could feel was love and compassion for all beings because I stopped comparing. Paragraph eight, sentence number six, when your forgiveness is complete, you will have total gratitude for you will see that everything has earned the right to love by being loving, even yourself. I had to practice forgiving myself for judging Ken. I had to practice many times. I told Ken, please forgive me. I was, I was judging you. I was spiritually judging you. I was making myself more superior. I was making myself more enlightened. Please forgive me. I, I don't know what he did with that. It doesn't matter. But I am certain God was using all of that. However, God was using it with Ken because God was using it with me. And I was willing. I was willing to allow God's voice to guide me. Again, I blocked it with my ego many times. But I would practice forgiveness each time that I forgot to open the door and listen to God. Paragraph 9. Today we learn to think of gratitude in place of anger, malice, and revenge. We have been given everything. If we refuse to recognize it, if we refuse to recognize it, and I refuse to recognize the abundance that was there every single time I focused on Ken's lack of gratitude for his abundance, I was not acknowledging the abundance that God is the one who created it, not Ken. It appeared to be coming through Ken, but it's coming through God, from God through that means. So if it comes through Ken, it can come in any which way. It can come through me. So as I began to move to the place of gratitude for the abundance that can only come from God, for the love that can only come from God, I realigned myself. It's like my GPS aligned itself to, to be guided by God, not to veer off the, the course and try to manage somebody who is suffering to get them to change so that I could be okay. My okayness came directly from God because I aligned directly with the truth that is true always. If we refuse to recognize it, we are not entitled, therefore, to our bitterness and to a self-perception which regards us in a place of merciless pursuit, where we are badgered ceaselessly and pushed about without a thought or care for us or for our future. That, that's really important to understand, that no matter how much I refuse to recognize that I was safe in the mind of God, no matter how much I refused to recognize it, it didn't make it not be true. It was true. I was just focusing on making Ken change his ways instead of me changing mine and aligning with God. In that merciless pursuit of something outside of me to give me what God was already had already given me inside of me. Gratitude becomes the single thought we substitute for these insane perceptions. Oh my gosh, being grateful for God, being grateful that everything is supplied by God, being grateful that I am creating my own experience, being grateful that so was Ken, so is everybody else, prepared me in such incredible ways to be aligned to the truth that is true always, to know that my gratitude for God is when I am expressing love, that love is how I express gratitude for love. If I'm not loving, I'm not being grateful to God in that moment who's the source of that love. Sentence number five in paragraph nine. God has cared for us and calls us son. Can these can can there be more than this? 
there's no more there cannot be more abundance in the world than the, than the knowingness that God has cared for me and cares for Ken and you and everybody else paragraph 10 our gratitude will pave the way to him and shorten our learning time by more than you could ever dream of when I started being grateful to God and stop pressuring Ken to be grateful to the fact that he had money I it, the, the shifts were so much faster I was saving a whole lot of time from suffering gratitude goes hand in hand with love and where one is the other must be found for gratitude is but an aspect of the love which is the source of all creation God gives thanks to you his son his daughter for being what you are his own completion and the source of love along with him every time I was grateful to God for being the supplier of all that is God was so grateful to me because I was the extender. I was what would allow the extension of God's love on this planet. And by extending it to Ken and to all living beings, God could be more of God through me. Oh my gosh, so amazing. Your gratitude to him is one with him to you, his to you. As I love, I'm being grateful. And as I'm being grateful, I receive more love. Giving and receiving are one absolutely beautiful for love can walk no road except the way of gratitude and thus we go who walk the way to God thank you for being with me on this lesson this is powerful love is the way I walk in gratitude giving expressing giving our love is how we receive the gratitude of God which is more love poured through us and when you understand that gratitude and love are the same thing how grateful am I that love flows through me and in my gratitude more love flows through me and it's this cycle that never ends giving and receiving are one seeing my spiritual ego trying to judge Ken for not being grateful enough helped me see where I wasn't being grateful because I wasn't flowing love all these lessons are powerful thanks and I'll see you in the next one bye-bye